How to use your workbox inside Practicad. The workbox is classified as this container we are highlighting now. All of the information we fill in from job all the way down to specification. The first part of the workbox we're going to show you what to do with job and drawing name. Essentially, this is just simply where, where we will name the job that we are currently working on. And then we will also give the drawing name that we're currently working on. These two fields can be reported both in PractiCAD and PractiCAM. They also download to PractiCAM. So for example, if we were to download this job with this drawing currently, and we would go, to go into PractiCAM, you would see that it would carry the job name here, which is the job name section in PractiCAM, and it would carry the drawing name here, because this is the new drawing section in PractiCAM. So the first thing we do when we start a drawing is give it a job name and a drawing name. The second portion of the workbox we're going to go over is the explanation of the identification parameters. The identification parameters in the workbox are defined by the zone, floor, and system number. Now each of these can be used in your own way. You do not need to use zone specifically for zone or system number for system number. These are just properties that can be reported in the system later. However, generally the zone is used for your supply return, exhaust relief, all the zones for a contractor. Floors are usually used for your floors from basement to ceiling. And system number is usually used to define a specific system like VAV1 or AHU1. There are two choices when you go to place parameters. You can either first freely type in a specific identification parameter and hit enter or you can pull from a drop down menu. Now these drop down menus are created in a different place in the software and there are tutorials on how to create them. In this exercise we're just showing you how to apply them to fittings and entities in the software. So what we're going to do first is we're going to select zone supply. Once we do that, Practicab will open up a box and it's going to prompt us to choose one of three options. Either A, we can apply new zone to new fittings. This means that every single entity from this moment on that has the identification property zone, it will be filled with the value supply. It's going to make all the entities zone supply from here on out or until we change the zone again. Apply new zone to entire drawing means update the entire drawing so that every entity now has the property supply. The last one is apply new zone to current selection. What this means is whatever we are currently selecting at this moment in time, current selection we define as the entities that are highlighted the moment I press the OK button. So if I had 10 fittings on the drawing, and five were selected, five fittings that were selected will get the supply for the property zone if we press OK. In this tutorial, we're going to hit apply new zone to new fittings and press OK. Then we're going to take the floor and here we're going to pick floor six. Now it's going to ask me the exact same choices for floor, we're going to press OK. For system number, instead of pulling from the drop down menu, I'm actually going to type in AHU-1. That'll be the system number that I want to be associated with the fittings we're about to place on the drawing. When I hit enter, I now need to click on the drawing. PractiCAD will prompt me for the exact same choices. I'm going to press OK. Once we've done that, we can now grab a piece of duct, place it on the drawing, and if we go into the AutoCAD property box to access that, I'm going to either A, double click on the duct, or you can right click and go to properties. And here you're going to notice that under identification properties, we have floor, zone, system number. And you can see floor six, zone supply, system number AHU-1. The third portion of the workbox is the current piece number. We have a field here in the workbox called piece number and we are capable of putting in any value that we want. There are multiple tutorials explaining how to use piece number automatics and how to create them. 
and most piece numbering automatics work off of the current number and the current number is whatever number is listed in this work box at the time you use the automatic you will notice here we're going to go into the auto number icon on my practicat ribbon and there are separate tutorials later on to come that show you how to work in this section here we're going to show you that there is an option which is called current number it's underneath tag you can see that one of the options for numbering is start from current and start from current means whatever the number is in your workbox at that time for example here we're going to run an automatic called piece numbering supply and this automatic happens to work from the current number so since the current number is currently one when I go to do piece number duck line forward and select you can see the practicat is starting from piece number one however if we do a control Z and undo that and we start it from number 50 and then run the same piece numbering automatic you can see that now it's going to start from number 50 or the current number you can now see it's also displaying what the last piece number on the drawing used was so this is how we can tell what is our current piece number part four is the explanation of applying specs from the workbox this is probably the most important part of the workbox because you should never be drawing duct without a specification in play it's easy to add zones floors and system number information later however specification information if you go to change might affect the way your duct line edits so it is proper procedure to always select the specification first and then go to grab your duct notice currently that spec has nothing selected so what we're going to do is grab a fitting and go into the fitting parameter box and you can see that it has no connections this is a great indicator that there are no specifications in play however if we come over to the work box pull from our drop down menu and say let's use two inch water gauge and obviously the choices will vary depending upon what your specifications are we're going to get the drop down menu is going to say should we either a apply new specs to new fittings b apply new specs to the entire drawing or edit the entire drawing at once or apply new specs to current selection that means whatever is currently selected we can now edit the spec to start off we're going to choose apply new spec to new fittings and press ok now we go to grab a piece of duct you can see instantly that the spec is working on the fitting you can see that it's added the proper connections and locks and all the other technology data we're going to put a couple of fittings on the drawing here we'll just do two pieces of rectangular duct a transition and then one more piece of rectangular duct you can see that the two inch water gauge is represented by tie rods and TDC or TDF flanges now if we're going to edit this we could highlight the section or use a selection automatic and there are separate tutorials on all of these selection automatics and then we can just go to the workbox and say we would like to apply six inch water gauge to the currently selected duct when I do that and I press OK you'll see when we let go of these fittings that they no longer have tie rods because the spec has changed you will also notice that if you double click on a fitting and go into the AutoCAD property box underneath technology we show the specification of the fitting itself so you can see it's been updated very important to always choose your specification first and then grab duct that is the recommended procedure that'll conclude our tutorials on the workbox